Hey, it's me again. Today we're talking about Brandon Sanderson's Dawn Shard, book three and a half in the Stormlight Archive series. I feel like the immediate point of comparison with this book is obviously Edge Dancer, which is book two and a half in the Stormlight Archive series. And I would say that this one felt more substantial, more significant, and ultimately I think I liked it more than Edge Dancer. Not to say that I didn't enjoy Edge Dancer. I did think it was a pretty fun read, but sometimes when I think about these in between books in the Stormlight Archive series, so Edge, Dancer, and Dawn Shard, I think to myself, what would it be like if somebody just picked these books up without knowing that they were part of a bigger series and not only not knowing that they were part of a bigger series, also not knowing that they were very small novellas as part of a series that majority of books that the series is comprised of are like 1300 to 1400 page behemoths. I, I simply don't know. So hopefully people know that these are part of the Stormlight Archive because I just picked this up and read this on its own or read Edge Dancer on its own. I would I would literally have no idea what is going on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything. Beyond all that though. These feel like necessary additions, not obviously as significant as the novels themselves. So Way of Kings, Oathbringer, Words of Radiance, and eventually going to get to Rhythm of War. But this one felt like more. It felt like it swayed more in a different direction when it came to the comparison between Edge Dancer and Dawn Shard. So if you're unfamiliar with what Dawn Shard is all about, it focuses on this character Risen, who is another character who shows up in one of the interludes in one of Sanderson's other books. Risen is a merchant from Thalina, and essentially she is going to this island. She has her small pet Larkin named Cheery Cheery with her, as well as a band of Alethi soldiers to help guide her there and defend her. And quickly we find out that Risen and the others who have accompanied her in over their head as this island is home to some dangerous creatures, some powerful magic. And I feel like one of the best aspects of Dawn Shard is Sanderson's clear skill in world building. The fauna and the flora and the unique imagery associated with this island that they travel to was a very vibrant image in my head as I was reading. And despite the pretty short length that claims to be a, a robust, lengthy sort of in-between novella, even though it's it's less than 300 pages and uh, the text that it takes up on each page is like the amount that it would on a Kindle, it's still in that sort of small amount of real estate manages to do really well at world building. I also like the depth that it includes and adds to with the rest of the Stormlight Archive, especially with Risen, who's an awesome character to follow along with. It's impossible not to root for her right away with her quest to make Cheery Cheery well again. That sort of connection between human and animal is very relatable, easy to root for, easy to cling to as one of the sort of main conflicts and sort of rooting interests in the book itself. And yeah, I think Risen and some of the other crossover characters from the Stormlight Archive that show up in this book are a lot of fun to follow in this short, fast, but substantial journey. So I'll get into some spoilers at this point. Keep that in mind. One of the most significant developments in this book after reading it, and probably like the main talking point, is Risen's absorption of this Dawn Shard that she discovers on the island. It's this very powerful artifact that sort of makes itself known and makes that fact about it known pretty much right away. And with its immense amount of power that it gives the wielder of the Dawn Shard, it also has an immense capacity for corruption. Risen is definitely hoping to be strengthened by her absorption of the Dawn Shard, but it does leave her a bit weakened and vulnerable in that state. But despite that, it definitely still has this immense amount of power and sort of heightens all of her senses and abilities as it is. It definitely adds to the already ever-growing, incredibly detailed magic system within the Stormlight Archive and definitely intrigues me when it comes to Risen's character going forward. The state and sort of like information around the Dawn Shards, like what is that all about? About. I want to see where that goes. Along with the shards and the heralds, the dawn shards are said to be like foundational, fundamental world shifting building blocks when it comes to this universe. So her absorption of one has to have a huge lasting impact when it comes to the remainder of this series, which I felt like wasn't necessarily lacking in Edge Dancer, but definitely this felt like a whole different operation and approach to that novella. I'm also very interested in all these like universal secrets that were contained within this island 
island of Akana, and obviously sort of the rooting interest of the Alethi and of Navani, Urethiru Oathgate can operate here. All of a sudden, that sort of crossover appeal is very much so present again with that immediate threat to the characters that we have definitely gotten to know much more in the other books in the Stormlight Archive. This whole revelation around their hoping to gain access through Urethiru, as well as their sort of defending the secrets of this island, it feels like they are on a path towards something that is much more universal and sort of foundational to this whole world that we have gotten to know while the Alethi are sort of just like starting to find out some of these things. So I'm interested to see how that sort of like ongoing conflict that has been at the root of this universe between the Alethi and the Parshendi develops after this novella. And the fact that a Dawn Shard that was able to be absorbed by Risen here is, is found on this island that's harboring so many different secrets, that has to have so many implications going forward, especially with the amount of power that is attributed to it. And I find Risen to be a really interesting character, and I hope that with the acquisition of this like world-shifting, world-breaking foundational power with the Dawn Shard, that she has made a more substantial character going forward in the series. It would only make sense considering how significant it feels like the acquisition of this, as well as the discovery of all the secrets on Akina, feels. It feels like that needs to play a role going forward. And clearly, considering how much power the Dawn Shard harbors, unforeseen consequences of the amount of power that was so quickly acquired by Risen. And also, if the Dawn Shards are so incredibly foundational to this universe, it seems like that like other parties involved in all the conflicts with the Alethi, with the Parshendi, people we don't even know about, some others in Roshar, are probably pursuing something related to the Dawn Shard. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of things that I'm sort of keeping track of at this point, and it feels like this will be central. Maybe I could be completely wrong, and Sanderson has much more in store for us. I haven't read Rhythm of War yet. I intend to very soon. But overall, this was a short novella that felt like it packed such a massive punch compared to Edge Dancer. It feels like this moved so many different things in a different direction when it comes to how important the different elements felt in this book, and especially considering the progression of Risen's sort of like agency and power, this could be this could be absolutely massive. So I'm eager to see where things go from here. Let me know if you have read Dawn Shard already and what you thought of it compared to the other Stormlight Archive books compared to Edge Dancer or what you thought of it in general. That's, I think, all I have to say about Dawn Shard for now. I look forward to reading Rhythm of War and sharing my thoughts in the future, but yeah, have a good one, everybody. Peace.